a little golden book. Pooh. The grand and wonderful day. Pooh. The grand and wonderful day. It was a sparkling morning in the hundred acre wood. The sort of day that makes a Pooh Bear want to say hello to the sun. The birds in the trees and especially to the honey pot waiting in the cupboard. As he tumbled out of bed, Winnie the Pooh remembered that a grand and wonderful thing was going to happen on this day. But being a bear of very little brain, Pooh could not remember what. Perhaps a mouthful of something golden and sweet would help, he said to himself. Although the honey was yummy in Pooh's tummy, it did nothing to jog his memory. So Pooh decided to call on Piglet. Perhaps Piglet would know what grand and wonderful thing to expect. On his way, Pooh sang to keep himself company. How nice it is to be able to say, even when you don't know what, that something grand will happen today. The wonderful thing that you forgot Oh, a grand and wonderful thing will happen today. Rum, tiddly, tiddly, tum. Pooh's song ended just as he got to Piglet's house. He knock, knock, knocked on the door. Surely, three knocks should be enough, Pooh thought to himself. But he knocked once more for good measure. No one was home. Maybe Piglet has gone to visit Rabbit. Said Pooh. Pooh knocked three times at Rabbit's door, then three more times in case Piglet was there. But there was no one home to say, Hello, Pooh, we were hoping you would come along. Or better still, Hello, Pooh, we've been saving a little something for you just in case. Dear, dear, muttered Pooh, scratching his head. Something grand and wonderful will happen today. 
but no one will know it but me. Things are always so much more grand and wonderful when your friends are there to share them. I always say. So Pooh Bear continued on to the sandy pit. He was hoping to find Roo playing there, with Kanga watching over him. But when he arrived, there was no Kanga and no Roo. I know, thought Pooh. Kanga and Roo are probably sharing a tasty little something to tide them over until lunch. If that's the case, company will be just the thing. When there was no answer at Kanga and Roos either, Pooh did not know what to think. Suddenly, he saw a bouncing something ahead. Pooh hoped that it would be his good friend Tigger. But the bouncing something turned out to be nothing more than some leaves swept by a breeze. By the time he got to Owl's tree house, Pooh's tummy was beginning to grumble. Please, oh please, let Owl be home, chanted Pooh as he knocked on the door and rang the bell at the same time. But by now, Pooh was really not surprised to find that there was no one home at Owl's house either. Now this was quite a lot of disappointment for one bear in one day. But Pooh refused to give up hope. He kept on walking until he arrived at the rather sad and boggy place where Eeyore lived. Eeyore called Pooh. Oh, Eeyore, where are you? But the little donkey did not answer. Bother, cried Pooh. What if, instead of something grand and wonderful, something entirely different is about to happen today? Something sad and gloomy. For instance, what if Everyone knows it but me. I'd better go to Christopher Robin's house at once. He'll know what to do. Pooh hurried 
through the hundred acre wood up steep slopes and over a rocky stream. Thoughts of blustery days and a honey raid by heffalumps and woozles filled his head. By the time Pooh arrived at Christopher Robin's house, he had become quite upset. Too upset to notice the colorful banner and balloons all about the yard. Christopher Robin, a sad and gloomy thing is about to happen, Pooh sputtered. I hope it hasn't happened already. Just as Pooh was relating his worries to Christopher Robin, Piglet and Rabbit and all the rest popped up to shout, Happy birthday, Pooh! Silly old bear, said Christopher Robin gently. Did you forget what day it is? I suppose I did, said Pooh. But I just remembered that no bear ever had such grand and wonderful friends. Of course, the honey cake with Pooh's name on it turned out to be rather grand and wonderful too. The End